So some of you may recognize this thumbnail. It belongs to a video that I had uploaded and preserved on my YouTube channel. And that video got hacked. So this short video that I'm doing right now is to explain what happened and to warn anybody and everybody to keep tabs on your videos. And this particular video was meant to be a post Beetlejuice Supernova video that I could quickly publish if, 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 a thousand times if Beetlejuice goes supernova. And the strategy behind making a video like this and uploading it onto YouTube is that it gets time stamped. And this allows me to update the video as quickly as updates come to my attention. And those updates would be other dreams of Beetlejuice or some star for that matter going supernova because this ministry has been tracing that possibility for the last year and more and more videos are coming in where people talk about a star exploding or a great flash of light in the heavens or some see a huge portal of light at the rapture and the strategy that I mentioned is to have this ready and have this updated every 24 hours so if, 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 if it happens, I can publish this thing immediately and that would authenticate all these dreams of a crack star turning to light, of a portal of light, of a shooting star turning to a rainbow of light, and then we will know that God has indeed been giving these people prophetic dreams. And oh, by the way, if you have had a similar dream or vision, please let me know. Post it on the comment section. I'd love to get a hold of it because that might be added to this video. And what happened the other night is there was either a software or computer glitch with YouTube or somebody hacked my site or something happened because I had this thing on a schedule status where I schedule it to be published oh sometime next year the month of December and that schedule date somehow got changed like I said it got hacked or YouTube burped. Anyway, the schedule got changed, and this wasn't the first time this has happened to me. And so, and so people are looking at this thinking that Beetlejuice went supernova. Obviously, it didn't, and you will know if, 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 if it ever does, because it's going to light up most of the horizon, and it will be all over the news, all over YouTube, all over everything, but there will be no mistaking there was a supernova and the best candidate for right now of anything like that happening is Beetlejuice. In fact, I'll be posting a video here in a day or three where I'm looking at the next set of breadcrumbs that the Lord has given us through a sister in Germany. She goes by Romo10, that's R-O-M-O-E space 10 or Romo10, where she had six visions back to back to back to back. And the next morning she had a dream and in that she saw an exploding ball of light and she shares some dreams from her that her sister and her mother had and they call what they saw an exploding star and all the elements of what she saw and what she dreamed as well as what was shared by her sister and her mother can only be well at least can only be in my opinion a supernova and when you dial that in with all the other dreams that I have in my other videos especially that five-part video on decoding two moons, four moons, tetrads, blood moons, planet alignments. Well, it develops even a stronger case in the courtroom of prophetic interpretation that this is indeed going to be what Jesus referred to as the sign of his return, a flash of brightness or a flash of luster that will span the heavens and will travel east to west. That's Luke 17, 24, and Matthew 24 27 and a quick note on that he didn't say this will be his time of return he says this will be a sign of his returning so I look at it as kind of a John the Baptist event where our Heavenly Father is gonna pop off some big star somewhere and that's gonna be kinda of like one crying in the wilderness saying prepare the way prepare the return so it's not that Jesus will return on such an event but rather things are close as to his return. And then there's the debate as to what return means. Does the rapture mean return or is it his return when he returns as promised in Acts chapter 1 where he physically comes back and sets foot on the Mount of Olives and begins his thousand year reign? 
Regardless, that video is going to be coming out in a couple days. Look for this thumbnail. I recommend you look up the YouTube postings from Romo 10, like the last four, and listen to them. I will very carefully deconstruct them and show you that what she saw was prophetic because I can reproduce it on Stellarium. And a little bit of a spoiler alert, when you take everything she saw and paint them on the same canvas, you're looking at the second half of October into the first two weeks of November. And if it goes into the second week of November, then I believe these end time events are going to go into the seven days of the Festival of Tabernacles and most likely the eighth day, because that too is a convocation. And by doing so, God will have addressed restoring his covenant times, such as his covenant with Noah, Abraham, Moses, King David, Christ himself, the new covenant, and our Heavenly Father will have also restored his appointed times that have been messed with for many millennia now, starting with the proper Rosh Hashanah, which was May 2nd, that's when you begin the barley harvest, the true Passover of May 16th, which he punctuated with a blood moon of May 15th into the 16th, and that blood moon being the third blood moon of a four blood moon tetrad we're currently in, a tetrad that is in the middle of a series of three tetrads, then a confirmation of the seventh day weekly Sabbath, which is required to find the first day of the festival of weeks, and the last day of the festival of weeks, which is Pentecost. And now by knowing God's true Rosh Hashanah, which you can read all about in Exodus chapter 12, that is the first day of the year, the first day of the month, the month assigned as the head of the year, well, that month is the month of Exodus. It's the month of Passover. It's the month of the seven days of unleavened bread. And it begins at the sliver crescent moon, the first of which is sighted in Jerusalem right after sunset. For 2022, that was May 2nd. That's the first month. And knowing that trumpets and tabernacles are in the seventh Hebrew month, well, you just complete six months from May 2nd, and lo and behold, it puts you on the near total solar eclipse on October 25th. Oh yeah, another sign in the heavens. And trumpets will be that first day after that solar eclipse, and tabernacles will be on the 15th day of that Hebrew month, and that's preceded a day earlier by the last day of the blood moon tetrad, the fourth blood moon of the four blood moon tetrad we're currently in. So the blood moon for Sukkot, or tabernacles, will be on the 8th, and tabernacles itself will be at sunset on the 9th of November. Oh wow, yet another sign in the heavens. And in Genesis 1, God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. That word seasons there is festivals, Moedim. Well, here we have four blood moons from last year and this year and a couple of solar eclipses, and everybody's ignoring them. Whereas God put them there to punctuate his appointed times. And when you dialed in a Rosh Hashanah and a first day of the seventh month, that being trumpets, when you dial those two in after a solar eclipse, as well as dialing in the two Passovers and the two tabernacles the day after the two blood moons in May from 2021 and 2022, and the last two blood moons, that being in November of 2021 and November of 2022, well, they all match the growing cycle and the harvest cycle of the barley grain. And it's the completed harvest of the barley grain, a handful or an omar of which is taken by the farmer or producer to Passover, to the seven days of unleavened bread, where it is then presented as a wave offering to the Lord. Well, all these blood moons and solar eclipses match that harvest cycle. But what everybody is doing is going to Google and saying, Hey, Google, when is Passover for 2022? When is Pentecost? When is Trumpets? When is Tabernacles? And they don't realize that Google gets it from the Hebrew religious community, and they practice a Hebrew calendar that they brought back with them from their Babylonian captivity when they were serving Babylonian gods. And they base their calendar on the spring equinox. 
that is a no-no. It's supposed to be based on a harvested, a threshed and winnowed barley grain that is completely harvested and packed away in the granaries or wherever they pack away the kernel, after which they take that Omar with them to Passover. That is what Moses did. That is what Moses taught. That's what the children of Israel followed under the guidance of Moses. They used Moses' Hebrew calendar, not a compromised Hebrew calendar that came from Babylon and has been practiced ever since. This is what God is trying to reestablish. And it's all right there in the Word of God. And like I said, I think God is going to walk us through every one of these appointed times, every one of these convocations, and all of these covenants of which Jesus confirmed. He said he would. He said, I've not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law, which means to confirm and to make manifest. And that's exactly what he did. And the reason why these covenants and appointed times of God are so important is because they all represent Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, in type and in understanding. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Well, Rosh Hashanah is the beginning. Jesus is the Passover sacrifice. Jesus is the first fruit barley grain wave offering. He ascended on the first day of the Festival of Weeks, and he sent down the Holy Spirit upon his disciples in Acts chapter 2. So we can safely say that he is the greater Moses of the greater Pentecost. He is the reason for trumpets, because that's either going to mark the beginning of his millennial reign upon the throne, and or his wedding to his bride, or possibly both. He is the high priest for the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, and he is the prototype, as it were, as the living temple of God, the tabernacle of God, where God tabernacled among us in the person of Christ Jesus, in his only begotten Son. That is the Father dwelling in the Son. And Jesus was also born on the first day of tabernacles. That is easily proven because we know when John the Baptist was born. Jesus came six months later. And eight days after his birth, he was circumcised on the eighth day of tabernacles. And that's the covenant of Abraham, the circumcision. Jesus being the greater Abraham. Jesus being the greater Moses. Jesus being the greater Noah. All these covenants and appointed times point to Christ. So getting these dates right is paramount to our Heavenly Father. Because it glorifies His Son. And the Father lives to glorify His Son the Son lives to glorify His Father. We should do likewise, but that ain't going to happen following compromised Hebrew calendars that came out of Babylon. And I'm guessing Betelgeuse is going to be a major factor in this at some point. Because Jesus, I believe, made reference to a supernova in Luke 17.24 and Matthew 24.27, as well as calling himself the bright morning star. That's in Revelations 2 and Revelation chapter 22. Well, what's a bright morning star? Well, if Betelgeuse goes Nova, you're going to see it for a couple weeks, if not a couple months, rise in the east, and it'll be visible in the morning light. So this is why I have this post-Betelgeuse supernova video at the ready and continually updated and ready to be published on a public level if, 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 a thousand times if, Betelgeuse goes supernova. I'm certainly not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes or play some kind of mind games. Unfortunately, or possibly fortunately, this thing got published for about an hour and a couple hundred people got to see it until I yanked it because obviously Beetlejuice did not go supernova. And I think one of the craziest parts of all this drama is it got a high percentage of likes. And here I thought I was going to get tarred and feathered for this thing going out by accident or by purpose. Regardless, it certainly wasn't by me. But all the material contained in that video is in all of my videos, especially the introduction in the two-part series that I've entitled Passover, Pentecost, and the Seventh-day Weekly Sabbath, Lost, as well as that five-part series on decoding all these moons, blood moons, tetrads, planetary alignments. It's all in there. And I will link that with the eye card. Just pull your cursor up to the right-hand corner of your screen. That white little sphere will come down. It's got a little eye in the middle of it. That's an eye card. Click on that, and it'll pull down a menu of all my other videos. 
you're welcome to do a deep dive into them. They are teaching videos, so they're going to be a lot longer than just expressing a dream that somebody had. And by the way, I don't get dreams. I'm not a prophet. I am not a dream interpreter. I'm just using virtual planetary software to dial up a realistic representation of what these people are seeing because Stellarium will provide a timeline to their storyline. And it's really cool when that's exactly what happens, knowing fairly well that these dreamers have no clue what they're seeing in their dreams and visions. So, in conclusion, my apologies if anybody has come away confused as to this video that was prematurely posted because some glitch happened or some hack happened or maybe I was having a very serious senior moment and hit the wrong button or something. I don't know. I haven't been able to figure out what happened. But I will continue to update that video in case Beetlejuice does go off. I hope you see the strategy behind that. It's a strategy. It's not a con job. Because if, 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 and when Beetlejuice goes off, every nation, every government, every dictator, every whack job is going to claim that God did this in the heavens as a sign of his anointing upon them. And it's not. It would be a sign of God's anointing upon his only begotten son, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And it would also be a strong cosmic road flare flashing through the heavens that God is serious about restoring his covenants and his appointed times. And for those of you that are struggling with letting go of your current Hebrew calendar, I'll say once again that the Hebrew calendar that God gave Moses is not the one you're going to find on YouTube or Google or any other place. It's the one that's going to match the blood moons and the solar eclipses that God placed in the heavens to identify and confirm those very things, his appointed times. And the precedence that has been set and that we witness from, let's say, the passion of Christ and the infilling of the Holy Spirit of the disciples back in Acts chapter 2, well, that precedence strongly suggests that God is going to unfold these end time events on his appointed times. Maybe not all of them, but that's kind of what happened back in the day. And since that's all I have to work with, well, I'm going to lean pretty heavily in that direction, that he's going to perform these things on his appointed times. And for 2022, those appointed times were as follows. Rosh Hashanah on the 2nd of May, Passover on the 16th of May, the first day of the Festival of Weeks was July 8th into the 9th, and Pentecost was sunset the 29th of August to sunset the 30th of August. Trumpets is the new moon after that partial solar eclipse of October 25th, making trumpets October 26th. The Day of Atonement, or Yom Kippur, is 10 days later, and the first day of the seven days of tabernacles will be the day after that last blood moon of the four blood moon tetrad, which we see on November 7th into the 8th. So tabernacles will be on the 9th of November. So I'll keep updating that post-supernova video, and I'll have it at the ready, just in case that big if, 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 if we see a supernova before the end of the year. And again, if you have had or know anybody or know anybody who has had a dream or vision of an exploding star and or one huge light portal and or a shooting or cracked star that turns to light, please provide that in the comment section. And I think they are going to increase in number and frequency. And of course, if we never do see a supernova, we don't have to worry about this video because it will not be published. But I will have it continually updated and uploaded. That way, if it happens, people can see the upload date and have some confidence that this was all foretold. Not by me, necessarily. I'm just connecting the dots and trying to paint a picture which Stellarium has given me. So, in conclusion, thank you for your understanding. And look for my video that I'm going to post here in a couple of days that deciphers and decodes those six visions in one dream from Romo 10. I promise you, it'll blow your mind. Maranatha.